Hey buddy, I've got a confession to make. I've been keeping secrets. I know, I know, I wanted to tell you, but I mean, frankly, everyone knows you can't keep a secret. Hello Minders, welcome back to the Mind Watercolor. Well, I've been keeping the secret for a couple years. I've had the opportunity to pick a palette of Daniel Smith watercolors, the hand poured pans, and we've finally gotten around to being able to release this. This opportunity has come to me through wet paint up in Minneapolis, Minnesota, St. Paul, Minneapolis, uh, up there. And these guys have just been great, and I'm very, very excited to show it to you today. They're in the new metal tins. So look, apologies, buddy. But without further ado, let's go look at them, okay? All right, so this picture kind of tells the whole story, I guess. Well, it doesn't tell the whole story. I'm going to tell the whole story. It tells the whole story of what I'm holding in my hand, I think. Anyway, exciting times for me. This is a first. I'm not really one this big on tracking down companies to produce uh, supplies with my name on it. It's ne never been a goal. It's just kind of fun, but I probably lack a little initiative there. Anyway, um, this is a Daniel Smith, one of their new metal half pan palettes. Let's just take a look here. Now, I guess a little over two years ago, maybe, maybe longer than that, Daniel Smith started hand pouring half pans. They don't produce the little kind of solid half pans that you unwrap and stick in. They actually hand pour them. Da Vinci is another one that does the same thing. And you probably are familiar with these. These are the first ones that came out. This is actually the Jane Blundell Half Pan Ultimate Mixing Palette. So it seems there was a lot of criticism and blowback on these sort of palette cases that, uh, I mean, let's face it, these were pretty crummy. Uh, got a lot of criticism. I criticized them myself. Um, it's just a really cheap chintzy palette. Not really worthy of Daniel Smith paint. That plus my personal preference is to be able to paint, pull paint right out into a mixing area without crossing over pans. That's not a big deal, but this was just almost toy quality in terms of the uh, half pan case. Anyway, all that to say, I think Daniel Smith must have heard the outcries and come out with this. I mean, now this is worthy of Daniel Smith paint. It's a standard uh, metal, nice quality metal half pan case. So I'm getting on a rabbit trail here. Uh, when I, these first came out, I was talking to my friend Marty Owings at Owings Art. Uh, some of you are familiar with his channel. He and I have done live broadcasts together. And I really, he is the uh, instigator of this whole thing. Uh, so I have to give credit where credit is due. He lives up in the Minneapolis, Minnesota area st paul minneapolis area and they have a really uh, dynamite art store up there called wet paint marty knows the guys has been working with them and buying art supplies with them for years knows the owner wet paint is just a great group of people to work with i've ordered from them many many times uh, they're just always prompt and courteous have an excellent selection i only wish i had an art store uh, like wet paint near me i have to go an hour and a half an hour to an hour and a half to get anything close to a wet paint type art supply store. Now wet paint in the past has put together some limited edition palettes, uh, mainly with Schminka, I think. I actually reviewed one in a palette picks episode, the Marilyn Garber Schminka Botanical Set. You may have seen that episode. Uh, we decided, they decided, it would be mutually beneficial to produce a Daniel Smith metal palette with my choice of colors and i'm really really excited about this but for one reason after another it was delay after delay after delay and so on and so forth anyway uh but we're finally there 
two years later, and this is the result. Now, what you may not know is that the hand poured selection that Daniel Smith has for this palette is only a choice of about 36 colors. It's not their full line. They're 200 and whatever it is now. I don't know. The selection that I had to draw from was 36 colors. So there were a lot of color choices. I was very satisfied. There were a few compromises, not really many. And uh, this is what I've got. Again, the features, pretty nice quality metal pan. Worthy of holding Daniel Smith paint. One of the top paints in the world. Right along with my favorite, M. Graham or Da Vinci or Schmincke or a handful of others. But Daniel Smith, undeniably, undeniably one of the top brands in the world. Uh, 12 colors, as uh, you saw, they give you extra pans so you can fill with your own colors. So that's nice. So you can make this a 24 color palette. Excellent. I'm going to be thinking about what I will fill with those. Comes with a watercolor paper swatch card already labeled with the colors that I picked. We'll go through those in a minute. And a blank swatch card on the back for the 12 colors that you might put in there. Now all the information will be below. This will be available exclusively through wet paint, exclusively, so you can't get this anywhere else, not at Daniel Smith even, not on Amazon, not anywhere else. And it is a limited edition set. So if this is something you're interested in, you'll want to grab it as soon as possible. They have a good stock, but it won't take much to sell them out, okay? Now I just want to talk about the colors and what kind of a palette this is, and we'll go through and take a look at it. Before I get started on the swatch card, um, at the time of producing this video, Wet Paint has these for $57, which I think is a bargain. It's a $95 value, the manufacturer suggested retail price. Now Wet Paint offers free shipping, so if you want to throw something in with this uh, to get to $99, $99 will get you free shipping. Just thought I'd mention that. Full disclosure, I do not get a dime for selling any of these. Just the pride of knowing that I'm working with a high quality paint, a great group like uh, Wet Paint, and the pride of being able to pick these colors and have other people use the same palette. That's just a really, really fun thing. The Wet Paint people are great people to work with. Again, I wanna say that they've had to close, so they're doing the majority of their business online. Bit by bit, states are gonna start opening, but uh, still, uh, it's not the same as having all your pistons firing at once. So this would be a great chance to support a great group and get a palette. Uh, you know, some of the uh, 12 color pan sets or 24 color pan sets on other art supply store sites are on back order. Because when these metal pans first came out, they were going like hotcakes. It was the first for Daniel Smith. So. If you have been looking at those and tried to order one and noticed they were back ordered, now's your chance. All right, what I'd like to do is swatch them out. I'm gonna talk a little about each of my color choices in general and just sort of do a palette tour. All right, we'll start out with Hansa Yellow and I'm just gonna gradate them this way, I think. For the most part, this is a split primary palette. Now this is not the most cool yellow. I have a cool yellow and I guess a warm yellow but I've divided the yellow a little bit more non-traditionally than, than some palettes would that use a split palette. I think the reason is because I don't use super cool, like a lemon yellow. I don't use them very much, but this is nevertheless is my cool leaning yellow. I won't go into split primary palettes. If you don't know what they are, just Google it. Uh, there's a lot of good information out there. Basically, it's a warm and cool version of each of the primaries. And that just gives you a little more mixing power and flexibility. Pyro Scarlet. This has always been one of my favorites in the M. Graham line. It's no different here. It's a sort of a a brilliant orange red. Very brilliant. And it fills that slot of a warm red or a warm leaning red. Very useful mixing color. Mixed with the color next to it, the Hansa yellow, you would get some very brilliant oranges. All right, the next one is Cordacridone Rose, another big time favorite in my M. Graham palette, and I use it all the time. This fills the slot with the cool red. Nice sort of cherry 
red tints out to a very nice uh, sort of magenta. The next choice I would say was a bit of a compromise. Uh, in their selection of half pens, they didn't really have a lot to choose from in terms of um, violets. My choice would have probably been dioxazine purple, possibly cobalt violet. Uh, the only one they had closest to what I was interested in was this Rose of Ultramarine. So this kind of fills the role of violet, and I use violets a lot uh, in earth tones. Violets are great for uh, muting greens, it can be used in skies, and I'm pretty happy with that choice. Now this next choice uh, was a new discovery for me when I started using Daniel Smith, and a really delightful one. And it's turned into one of my favorite uh, Daniel Smith colors, and that's Moon Glow. Moon Glow I would classify as sort of a violet Payne's Gray, if that makes any sense. It's not a Payne's Gray, but um, it's just a really neat color. It's a very, uh, almost a perylene violet kind of a color. Now the role it fills on this palette, happily, is neutral tint. I mean, it's, it's beautiful by itself. Uh, it can mix uh, with some other deep colors to give you some nice blacks. But that, that violet there just, it works so well to neutral tint pretty much everything on this palette. Now there is no uh, Payne's Gray on this palette. You can mix it um, and we're going to get to transparent red iron oxide. But transparent red iron oxide and ultramarine blue sort of make a nice uh, Payne's Gray. At the very least it makes a pretty decent black. Yeah, so that leads me to this next color, which needs no introduction and is pretty much a staple on just about any palette, and that's Ultramarine Blue. And Daniel Smith's is just a beautiful version. So moving on, the other blue, uh, and here we're getting into splitting primaries again, is Thalo Blue Green Shade. Now Ultramarine sort of fills that warm blue uh, slot, warm leaning. Thalo Blue Green Shade is a cool leaning blue. And I really like Daniel Smith's version of this too. Just very brilliant. I mean, Thalo Blue Green Shade is brilliant enough, but I like how aqua it leans. It kind of leans more aqua, I think, than a lot of other brands. So it splits that, that primary again really well, which just uh, makes for a nice mixing wheel, if you will. We're going to get into the greens. I have two greens, the first being Thalo Green, blue shade. And being a big landscape painter, uh, it's just a great green to have. Good mixing green. Lots you can do with that color. Next color uh, has turned into another Daniel Smith favorite of mine. Um, it sort of is a sap green-like color. It is the Green Appetite Genuine. It is one of the Daniel Smith Primatex, uh, which is a natural derived pigment. And it's just lovely. It, uh, you can't see it here, but it separates into components, which I love for landscape. Sort of a black and, and green component. Granulates nicely, very earthy, natural green. And I think uh, it's a real Daniel Smith distinctive. So I really had to have that on this palette. And moving on, Quinacridone Gold. And Quinacridone Gold is a really nice sort of a raw sienna color. Much more potent than raw sienna, which I like because that just gives you some tinting options. Most raw siennas I've ever used I've never liked because they're weak. Um, love this. Uh, it fills the roll, uh, a dual roll. It, it adds another yellow, a warm yellow, and you'll see that if as I start to tint this out. It's a little warmer than the Hansa yellow. As you tint out quinacridone gold, and my my favorite on the M-Gram colors has always been the nic their nickel quinacridone gold, but I like this equally well. It's, uh, as you can see here, when you tint it out, you get a nice sort of warmish yellow 
but it gets much deeper here than most yellows. So it has a little more range and you can mute this with other colors for a nice ochre. So love, love, love quinacridone gold. And in these last three, you're going to see how I produce, uh, generally produce my earth tones. Quinacridone gold is a big one in that factor. The next one is a big one in that factor. And that's transparent red iron oxide. I really, really come to rely on that color. Between these two, you can produce literally any uh, earth pigment or earth tone. And just uh, really clean, beautiful, brilliant ways. Or transparent ways, I guess I should say. Um, I talk about uh, mixing my earth tones uh, in a lot of videos. I'm definitely not saying that that's what you should be doing. It just turned out to be a preference of mine because... Uh, when I was uh, doing a lot of illustration, and the watercolor I would use if I'd use any in the illustration was um, student grade. It was Cotman or sometimes Van Gogh. I had a few pro level ones, but the earth tones were always muddy, chalky, opaque. Hated them. So I got in the habit of mixing my own, and the habit just stuck. I really, as I started progressing into uh, artist grade or pro grade watercolors. I just liked uh, the clean transparent hues that I would get mixing my own earth tones that I, I just kept the habit. Now granted, when you get into pro quality artist watercolors, you can get earth tones that are a lot cleaner, pure, nicer looking, if you will, if you shop carefully. But I, I've just kept the habit. So that's what I do here. And that brings me to my last color, which is raw umber. Raw umber is uh, fills a sepia role for me. They did not have a sepia in the pan range. I use sepia in my M. Graham palette as a sort of neutral tint for warm colors like yellow, red browns, golds, greens. Just a way of neutralizing or bending colors that are very, very warm. And it's just a nice uh, color to have, especially for landscape. For brown grays, you can't beat it. And I'm pretty proud of that, that selection. That is a powerful palette. You really would never ever need to paint with any other selection of colors. It's just amazing to me how limited palettes can really uh, do a lot for you and teach you a lot about mixing. All right, minders. Well, thank you so much for watching. Um, I'm very excited about this. Hopefully in, uh, I really am planning the next episode will be doing a painting with this palette. So stay tuned for that. And I'm sure there'll be more down the road. Thank you so much, uh, patrons for your support. Couldn't be doing this without you. And I'm going to leave this up for a minute since I'll be debuting this as a premiere. And that'll give the chat maybe a minute or two longer to continue so we can sign off on the chat. Thanks again, everyone.